how to find out how we got the law of cosines in the first place. Okay? So the law of sines can be used to determine the measures of missing angles and sides of a triangle. When the measure of two angles and a side, angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, or the measures of two sides and a non-included side, 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 angle, are known. However, the law of sines cannot be used to determine the measure of missing angles and sides of a triangle when the measure of two sides and an included angle or the measure of three sides are known. Since the law of sines can only be used in certain situations, we need to develop another method to address the possible cases. This new method is called the law of sines, cosines. To develop the law of cosines, we're going to begin with triangle A, B, C. From vertex C in altitude, K is drawn and separated side C into two segments. We're going to call them X and C minus X. Okay? So why are the segments represented this way? C is across from angle C. Okay? We know that. We labeled them that way. And we want to take away this amount because we have K there. So that is why they're written like that. Okay, the altitude separates ABC into two right triangles. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem to write two equations, one related to KB and C minus X, and one related to A, K, and X. So, if we're looking at just this half, guys, and we're using Pythagorean theorem, which one would be the hypotenuse? B. So we're going to say K squared plus C minus X squared equals b squared. Now if we're just looking at this half, what are we going to say the hypotenuse is? What is it? A. A. So we're going to say k squared plus x squared equals a squared. Okay, do we see that both of them have k squared in it? Yeah. Okay, we're going to solve each side for k squared. So we're going to take this top one, k squared plus C minus X squared equals B squared. And we're going to solve it for K squared. So I'm just going to subtract this whole thing to the other side. So I get K squared equals B squared minus C minus X squared. And then I'm going to do it with this one right here. I've got K squared plus X squared equals A squared. What am I going to do to get a squared, k squared by itself? What do I need to subtract? k squared plus x squared equals a squared. How am I going to get k squared all by itself? Minus x squared. Good. So k squared equals a squared minus x squared. So far so good? I know it's weird because there's no numbers, but this is how we get a formula. Okay, since both of the equations in question two are equal to k squared, do we agree that they can be equal to each other? Okay, so we're going to set the equations equal to each other. We're going to say b squared minus c minus x squared equals a squared minus x squared. Okay, all right, let's turn it over. I've, I... I promise I'm not yet. Okay. I haven't turned it over. When you're done, turn it over. Okay. I'm assuming from all the talking, we're done no. writing. No. Shh. Then. Got it? Okay. All right. So I'm going to rewrite this at the top of my paper so I don't have to just keep switching back and forth. So I've got b squared minus c minus x squared equals a squared minus x squared. Okay. Notice that the equation in question three involves x. However, x is not a side of triangle ABC. As a result, we will attempt to rewrite the equation in question 3 so it does not include x. Begin by expanding using the distributive property uh, and the quantity. 
Okay? So we're going to have b squared minus, we're going to take c minus x squared. Do you guys remember how to do that using the box method? c minus x and c minus x? Yeah? So we get c squared minus cx minus cx and x squared. So we get a negative c squared minus 2cx plus x squared equals a squared minus x squared. Yeah. c times c we agree is c squared, correct? c times negative x is negative cx. Negative x times c is negative cx. And negative x times a negative x is a positive x squared. Oh. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. So now I'm going to distribute this negative out front. I'm going to times everything in the inside by that negative. So I get b squared minus c squared plus 2cx minus x squared equals a squared minus x squared. So far so good? Sure. So I just changed the signs because I distributed by negative. Shh. Okay. I am going to add x squared to both sides. That's 2cx, yep. Yeah. So these x squareds are gone now, correct? So I'm going to be left with b squared minus c squared plus 2cx equals a squared. All right. Now we want to solve and get b squared all by itself. Okay. So I am going to get b squared equals c squared minus 2cx plus a squared. Okay. The equation in question 5 still involves x. To eliminate x from the equation, we will attempt to substitute an expression for x. So we need to write an equation involving both cosine b and x. So we're going to go back to our picture, right here, and see how we have b right here? So we're going to do the cosine of b. Cosine is the adjacent over the what? Okay, so cosine b equals x over a, right? So we're going to write cosine b equals x over a. Okay. We want to get that x all by itself. So what do I do to get rid of the a? Multiply. Shh. Quiet, guys. A cosine b equals x. So wherever we see x, we're going to put a cosine b. So I get b squared equals c squared minus 2c a cosine b because that's what we're putting instead of that x, plus a squared. Okay. So now, we are just going to substitute the equivalent expression for x into the equation from question 5. Yeah, we got that. The resulting equation contains only sides and angles of ABC, and the question is called law of cosine. So I'm just going to rewrite it. I'm going to use those same things. But I'm going to put it in a slightly different order. I'm going to move the a squared to the beginning plus c squared 
minus 2, I'm going to change it to AC. We get that they're being multiplied, so it doesn't really matter what comes first. Cosine B. Okay? So there are two similar ones where I could solve this for A squared or C squared, and it would be almost the same thing. What gets replaced is this becomes 2 B C cosine A instead at the end. And we get C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2 A B cosine C. So these are the laws of cosines. Okay, so we're going to use these equations to answer some questions. I'm going to do two problems from your homework just so we can get practice with this law of cosines. So if you could turn to your homework. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. Well, we're going to use, we just derived it, right, which is kind of a higher level thinking. And remember, I'm never going to test you on how to find this equation. I'm just going to test you on how to use equations. I want you guys to remember that I'm still teaching right now, much less recording, and you should be quiet. Okay. We're going to look right at number one. We're going to find side AB. So just like with the law of cosines, we're going to walk through these steps together. Angle C across from angle C is little c. Across from angle A is little a, and across from angle B is little b. Okay? We need to find AB, which is C. So we're going to use C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. Okay? I'm using this one because I'm looking for little c. When I'm looking for a little c, I'm going to use the c squared one. That's a good question. So I'm going to have c squared equals, what's a squared, guys? What's a? What's a? Shh. 29. Shh. Side conversations need to end. Little b is 13. Minus 2 times a, which is 29 times b, which is 13, cosine 41. What's nice about this is once you have that written out, you have two steps. You write it out, you put this in your calculator, so I go 29 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 29 times 13, cosine 41. I get c squared equals... 440 point, let's say 9.5. And so my last step is to what? How do I get rid of a squared? Square root it. So I put that number, I square root it, and I get 20.99 is my answer. Okay? Not too bad, right? Once I label it, I put in the equation, I gotta stick it in my calculator once, find the square root of it, and I'm finished. Yeah, yeah, you can round it to the nearest 10. Okay, then let's do one where I have to find an angle because it's just a couple more steps, okay? So I'm gonna look at number eight. I'm gonna look at number eight. What's my first step, just like with law of signs? What do I got to do first? Label. A is little a, B is little b, C is little c. Okay? I need to find angle B. Okay? So if I'm going to find angle B, I, never mind, I don't like number eight. No, you have to do it. I just, it's more steps than I want to start with. Okay, so let's do number seven. We're going to label this little c, little b, and little a. Okay? 
we're going to find angle A. So that means we're going to use A squared. So we know we're going to use the A squared plus equals B squared plus C squared. So I'm going to plug these in. We have A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. So I'm going to plug it in. I know A is 14 squared equals B, which is 9 squared, plus C, which is 6 squared, minus 2 times B, 9, C, 6, cosine, and we don't know what A is. Okay. So this just means there's a couple more steps. I've got to do it in parts. First, I'm going to do 14 squared. So first, I'm going to do it in parts. I'm going to do 14 squared first. And I get 196. Then I'm going to do 9 squared plus 6 squared next. So let me ask you guys a question. Why can't I go 9 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 9 times 6 times cosine 8? Why can't I do that? Because of that cosine A, all of this stuff goes together. So I've got to split it in two pieces. I'm going to put this in my calculator, and I'm going to get 117 minus, and then I'm going to put this in my calculator. 2 times 9 times 6 gives me 108. I cannot subtract them from each other because I have this cosine A at the end. Right? Like, I can't put 9 plus 2x together, right? Because the 2 has that x with it. Does that make sense? Okay. So now I'm going to subtract 117 from both sides. And I get 196 minus 117, and I get 79 equals negative 108 cosine A. Now I'm going to divide. Do you guys see that they're multiplied together? I'm going to divide by negative 108. Divide. And I get this crazy negative number, negative 0 0.7. 7315 by round equals cosine A. But we know how to do this, right? How am I going to get A by itself if I've got a cosine there? Do the inverse, yeah. Cosine of negative 1, negative 0 0.7315 equals A. So we just put trig cosine of negative 1, negative 0.7315. 1, 5, gives me 137 degrees. Okay. Um, did you put cosine of negative 1? And then did you remember to put the negative in front? Okay. Do you want to know an easier way to do this? It means you have to know another equation. So this was a lot of steps to find the angle, right? I have one, two, three things I put in my calculator. Four I have to subtract. Five I have to divide. Six I have to take the inverse. Do you want to just cut straight to the chase? Okay. See this right here at the top? This shows us how to get right to it. We just put cosine negative one. And then we put in parentheses, and we're dealing with A, so we want A squared minus B squared minus C squared all over negative 2BC. So you can stick it all in there at once. So let's try that. Cosine of negative 1, little a is 14, right, squared. Minus little b, which is 9 <coughs> squared, minus little c, which is 6 squared, all over negative 2 
times 9 times 6. So we have that inverse cosine. Make sure you have what's on the top on the top and what's on the bottom on the bottom and them separated. So you might want to have some extra parentheses. 14 squared minus 9 squared minus 6 squared all over negative 2 times 9 times 6. Yeah, and I get 137 degrees. You can do this either way. I showed you both ways. I didn't just skip to this easier way because a lot of people put this in the calculator wrong. So either way is fine, and I'm going to put these um, equations up on the board so you can use them for testing tonight, okay? All right, you have the rest of the hour to do the eight more problems. Get started on the